Say, for example, I wasn't pushing hard enough. Harder. It's not telling me to push harder. So, and if I'm doing a good job, good compression. It'll tell me I'm doing a good job. The reason for that is there's a puck in here. It tells you how fast you're pressing is how deep you're pressing. So, it not just tells you an audio in the audio format. It also tells you text wise to push harder, as well as if you're doing a good job, it tells you it validates that too. It also tells you on the text screen there, your actual proper text screen, tells you how many shocks are provided. So when the emergency services arrives on the site, if this machine went through five shocks, so that means we have 10 minutes lapsed in regards to uh, how long this machine was deployed and how many times we have to do CPR, or how long we've been CPR for. It also gives them a time frame too. But also here on the side, there's no heart rhythm it's until you do CPR. So you never stop doing CPR until so the person comes to you on site, but you make sure they stay in this position. And the reason being is, as I said, they're fragile. And the other part is that you have control. And when emergency services arrives on site, there, then and only then, you'll get give them, they'll take over from, from you. Because they'll ask you questions. How long have you been doing CPR? Yeah. I just had a question. Yeah. Did they, when they had the, the heartbeat comes back, mm -hmm. do they source it in the machine or do they say anything to you that is already? It doesn't say anything. The only thing oh. is that if you were pressing down on my chest and I came too, I'd wake up. Oh. So I'd be responsive now. So now I can tell you to stop. Or I can say, I'm okay, but then you tell them, oh. lights stay down. I see. Don't, don't move. 911 is on the way, you just had a cardiac arrest, and the machine, the AD is attached to you. So it's monitoring. Do you have the see what Your unit here is, an, uh, is automatic. So what it does is, the moment you put the pads on, and it uh, has been attached, and detects that there's a shuffle rhythm, it's going to say, shock goodbyes, like it did before, and it's going to give you a count. Three, two, one, it's all you sound clear, and then provide the shock. So you don't have to press a button, it automatically does that for you, it controls the process for you as well. Say for example, I wasn't pushing down fast enough. The machine as I have here, the metronome, it slows down and makes me pick up my pace again. So it starts to auto-correct you in regards to the beat you're following. If you've never done CPR as well. So the main thing is we want to make sure we're sort of mimicking the breathing process, how the heart beats as well, to provide oxygen so that there's not too much loss of, of muscle, uh, or muscle doesn't die, as well as the blood uh, thing, it stays oxygenated as well. Um, providing rescue breaths. So if you had a mask and you know how times you don't want to put your mouth in somebody else's mouth that way, this helps. Okay? So what you have to remember about this unit is, it's going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process of actually how to and what steps to follow. It told, told you to call 911. You have another lifeline there to talk you through the process. You're gonna hear the bones crack. You'll hear the sternum uh, dislocate as well. Remember, the process is you're gonna get, hopefully, this person revised and has another day. Uh, and you're acting only in good faith, trying to help them to the best of your ability. You press only five times? Did you say five times? Oh, it goes through five seconds. So it's 30 times and then it pauses. And then 30 times again, you pause it. It does that for five sets, oh. right? So that's about a two minute span of doing the compressions that way. And then it pauses for 10 seconds and reanalyzes the heart rhythm. If it needs to be shocked again, I'll tell you to shock again. So you just stop when that thing stops? That's what you'll tell you. I'll tell you to sound clear. And you, just tell, you, you tell the next person to come in and start doing it. But if, say, for example, you're alone, it's okay to stop for one cycle. But the reason being is that if you're not doing proper CPR, what happens is the heart will fill with blood, and sometimes the machine will not be able to detect a shock or rhythm. The other thing is that we're not drawing enough oxygen in into the body as well, so that's doing more harm than good. So it's better to do good CPR uh, than not. Uh, if you're doing poor CPR, we're not helping this machine do its job. So if you're tired, stop for a few moments. It's not gonna, you know you can only do so much. And say for example, we were in the bush or in the wilderness, you can only do so much. This machine is gonna provide 220 shocks. So it can keep on going until we have, you know, there's no more juice left, uh, or until emergency services arise. And generally speaking, uh, the pads and the batteries there themselves are good for five years. So say for example, we had an incident uh, today, 